Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and today is an ink review. And you, in case you haven't read this already, you already know by the logo on the top of that bottle. This is a bottle of Jin Hao ink. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with Jin Hao ink, and I don't think a lot of you probably do either. Though, if you do, please share your impressions in the comments below as we go through the review. When I was looking at this ink, it's a deep blue ink that already appeals to me, as you might have guessed. I couldn't find a lot of information about Jin Hao inks or this color. Now, I did find some information about one of the other colors that I purchased, and I'll do a review of that ink in the near future. But this one, I couldn't really find anything. But I found a great price on AliExpress with free shipping to the U.S. And I said, you know what? I'm diving in. And it's either good or it's bad. At least I'll know and I can share with you what I think. So I bought this ink along with two other colors and uh, used this in that recent review of the Wing Sun. And this ink I actually really like. So we're going to look at how it performs and wetness test and all that good stuff, dry time, and we will test it on both this Rhodia paper and a cheap notebook from Dollar General. So let's start with how it writes with that Wingsung 699, and it really does quite nicely. You will see that there is some really nice shading within the ink. It performs quite well. Flip the paper over, and there's really not a big problem with bleed through. This is Rhodia paper, and you do see a spot here where I did the wetness test, and one other, I don't know what that is, where the O crosses back over itself, and that's it. And then with the uh, glass dip pen here, which writes as a very wet broad, you will see that there is just uh, some ghosting and just a little bit of bleed through there. And with that glass pen, let's talk about that. Again, very, very wet here at the beginning. Uh, I did tap it and tried to get just kind of a normal amount of ink, but still just holds ink a lot. And actually, this pen, you can write with it for quite a long time per dip because it does hold a lot of ink in those grooves. And I mentioned that because it's relevant to this. So lots of ink here. So a broad line is going to be quite a bit, and wet line is going to be a lot uh, darker, and then you start to see uh, lighter shading come through as the line goes. But definitely a broad wet line here, um, but not not bad performance on the Rhodia paper, but it did, there's a spot or two there, and just that little bit there, and you do see where I made my grid, which was wing, with the wing song at those intersection points at the corners. You see a little bit. So uh, there you go. On Rhodia paper, just uh, barely a, a little bit of bleed through. Ghosting is really not bad, except with that dip pin at the beginning of the line at its point of greatest wetness. Okay, now I do also have it on this inexpensive paper. This is made in India. It is just a small composition notebook from uh, Dollar General, and it performed actually pretty well on this paper. Now, let me just show you across the page. This is the writing sample. This is with a glass dip pen, and this up here is with the Majan A1, and that is Birmingham uh, Petroleum. You can see that test as well on my channel. And that is a very well-behaved ink. You see a little bit of uh, ghosting, and you see some bleed through here. So that gives you an idea, a little point of reference for another ink. And this is how the Jin Hao did. Just slightly better, actually, than that Birmingham pen did on bleed through. There is just, there's a little bit right here. There's a dot there, a dot there. And then on the wetness test here and the wetness test with the glass dip pen, ghosting for sure, but uh, not real bad on bleed through on cheap paper. For me, this is perfectly acceptable in this particular notebook because a lot of pens and a lot of inks, including gel pens and roller balls, go through this paper just a little bit. Handy, cheap little notebook, but it's not as well uh, made as some of the others that I've shared on the channel. All right, let's do an ink swab here with the old Q-tip. Here is the first pass. It's a nice blue, I think. A little bit more. And 
that second pass. So when this ink first arrived, my first impressions were that this is a blue that I like. I like the variance in the shading here. It's just a nice, easy on the eye shade of blue. And I don't know, hopefully this comes through in the video for you, but especially out of this Wing Sung 699, it reminds me a lot of Platinum Blue Black. And I'm actually going to show you in the chromatography why I think that uh, it's kind of similar, but also why there's actually more going on in this Jin Hao ink than there is in that Platinum Blue Black. But before we get into that chromatography, why don't we do a quick dry test. For this test, I'm going to be using the Wing Sung 699. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Fifteen seconds. And thirty seconds. Very quick drying ink. Not bad at all. Now let's do the water test. All right, let's see how big a mess I make today. Okay, I've let that sit for a couple of minutes. Let's see how that goes. Okay, this is how much of the ink came up on the paper towel. And not too, too bad. That's, that's better than I expected. And really, not a lot came through the back either as it got wet. So that's really not too bad. I would call that moderate. I mean, there there's a lot of a lot of missing ink in it, and there's a bunch on that paper towel. But you might be able to read well enough what you wrote. That's not too bad. I would I would consider that a good moderate water fastness. They make no claim to it being waterproof or anything like that. Uh, but but not bad for just a normal non bulletproof ink. So now let's get to that chromatography, right? And you've been waiting for it all this time, maybe even jumped ahead in the video. I know what you're like. Here is the chromatography, and it's interesting what's going on here. It's not anything too startling or anything like that, but there is quite a bit of that blue, obviously, uh, here. And so this is the start line, and a lot of blue, just a lot of that good, sorry to use the title in, in the description, but deep blue, and then you get into these, this very light blue-gray and then a, a darker gray, and then a little bit of peach color right up in there before giving out to finally just the very slightest hint of something dark that might be black. <laughs> so, I mean, there's really not much there to see. Uh, sometimes these other things concentrate there, but if there's a, any black in this, it is just the absolute smallest amount of that. All right, I said I would compare it to the Platinum Blue Black, and that chromatography is right here. And you will notice it doesn't go up very far. It is a more color fast ink in general. It's an iron gall ink. And you can see what I mean about the shades of blue. They're not identical at all, but there is some similarity. Uh, obviously, very different composition. You do have some of this same peach color in just the slightest shading way up here at the top. Not even really sure you're going to be able to see that. But overall, a lot more going on in terms of colors used to make this deep blue than what we see going on in that blue-black. I actually am really glad that I tried it. I have found another, imagine that, another blue ink that I really like. Let me say, one of the colors that I got is a bamboo green, and I'm just going to go ahead and give you a hint. I like that color. Very natural bamboo green, so stay tuned to the channel because that's coming up too. All right, what do you think about this color, and do you have any experience with their inks? If so, share that in the comments below. God bless you, and have a great week.